thank you much. Uh, so this is my uh, uh, topic. I uh, mentioned my recent collaborators and uh, this little hedgehog is topological and trivial animal, which is related to instantons and many other things. So I want to start, oh, oh. I want to start with some map of uh, gauge topology to uh, give you overall uh, picture. And uh, I start from this uh, blue area, which is related to confinement. So historically, confinement started with Wilson criteria that uh, average of Wilson loop decreases as area of it. And that was related to how many these blue lines, which are center vertices, cross it. And each vertex, if you go around it, uh, get angle of pi. So it contributes minus one to the Wilson loop. When the two vertices merge, uh, you have two pi uh, singularity, which is invisible Dirac string. And the end of the Dirac string is a monopole. So there are monopoles in uh, gauge theories, which are identified on the lattice, etc. In terms of monopoles, confinement is especially uh, simple and physically appealing. It's just both a condensation of these uh, monopoles. Monopoles behave like a particle. Now, however, there are difficulties with monopoles, and uh, I uh, will not discuss it in this talk, but uh, it was uh, kind of resolved by this Poisson duality. Now, if I switch to the right side, the yellow side, this is related to chiral symmetry breaking. And uh, that relates to instantons. Instantons are uh, semi-classical lumps, as Raju would call them, but they are in Euclidean space-time. And they are four-dimensional symmetric solutions in young Mills equation of particular shape. And what is important is that they have zero modes with quarks or bound states. And therefore, each instanton effectively is a multi-fermion operator. It's invented by Toft. For example, you have uh, two flavors, uh, up and down quarks, you have four Fermi operators, and that is very important for generating chiral symmetry breaking. Now, if you go to find a temperature, and uh, the difference is that now a field A0 uh, related to Polyakov line is non-zero. And uh, when we try to get solu instant on solution, where fields do not go to zero at large distances, but to this A naught, it was realized that instant one actually splits an NC uh, constituents. And these constituents are more complicated. Uh, they have these white lines, which indicated that they're monopoles. And they, they are self-dual. The electric and magnetic fields are equal in Euclid, of course, in Euclidean space-time, but uh, uh, while instanton has only topological charge, they have these uh, magnetic charges and uh, you might say electric charges. Uh, and uh, they have fraction of action of the instanton. So all three together adds to the action of the instanton, but they can have arbitrary fraction. Not one of one C fraction, any fraction. And the theorem of quantization of topological charge is avoided because of this Dirac string. They're not separated really completely. And uh, last thing I want to say about it is that it become relatively recently clear that if one calculate partition function in terms of the semi-classical object in standards, uh, it is uh, equivalent to the, the ones in monopoles. This is very important because uh, we have difficulty with monopoles and uh, we didn't know how to work with them. Uh, but uh, these objects are semi-classical. So recently, uh, or in the last few years, simulation of ensembles of this instant ions explained the confinement and chiral transition, etc. So I will not speak about it here because this is a school about EIC, not uh, uh, heavy ion collisions, but uh, I have a, a book where everything is written, uh, which appeared uh, this summer. And uh, this, this is my ad for the book. Any question there was? There was some sound. You hear me well, right? Yes, we do. We do. Uh, 
Okay, so here is uh, my outline. I have already shown you this map of gauge topology. Uh, by the way, this map did not include uh, sphalerons. We have some discussion of sphalerons. There are lots of things about it in the book as well. And we think of uh, production of sphaleron and PP collisions at uh, LHC and, and RIC in diffractive processes. But I will not speak about it. So my talk is divided in two halves. One is this blue, which is old material, which is pedagogical and something which I want to tell you about instantons. Uh, there would be no finite temperature. And the second half uh, is a couple of new papers and some on incoming paper uh, about spin forces. And uh, this is related to this light front wave functions, which is uh, the main uh, direction of our research here. So maybe we can, between the blue part and the red part, also make a couple minutes break or something like that. Okay, so one thing is a so-called vacuum structure. So you have Euclidean uh, integral, which is done on the lattice, but it also can be done semi-classically. And semi-classical uh, maxima uh, are these instantons. They are making, uh, set, they exist in certain density, they interact with each other. So that was called in gen generical instant liquid. Now, uh, the other thing uh, which uh, we'll speak about are these traditional quark models. So traditional quark models deal with effective objects. They are constituent quarks, which have certain mass generated by this uh, vacuum condensate. And this is, uh, so chiral symmetry breaking provide quark masses and basically solve the problem of mass. Uh, I believe Ismail will speak more about that. And then in the quark models, there are confining potential, coulomb potential. Uh, it works very well for quarkonia. It uh, can be made to work for lighter mesons. And what is important, there are also residual interaction, as it is called, which are residual interaction between quarks, which are not included in confining and coulomb forces. And that is what uh, I will be focusing on. On the light front, uh, uh, you have the school, and in the school, you was given a lot of uh, description of uh, PTF, uh, transverse momentum distributions, and all things like this. Uh, this, uh, this distribution amplitudes. They are all matrix elements of the hadronic wave function. But this hadronic wave function itself, like of a nucleon, had very little attention as such. And uh, even more important object, uh, the Hamiltonian, which produced these wave functions, was also uh, not studied. So our direction would be to try to derive that. One more direction is holographic. I will not really discuss it. I'll just mention it in some things. So here is a historic introduction about chiral symmetry breaking. So chiral symmetry itself was introduced by Nambu and Yonalazinia in the classic paper uh, 60 years ago. So the main idea of Tamburi and Lazinia, there was time that was before QCD, of course. Uh, people knew very little about strong interaction. They assumed that the interaction is uh, some four Fermi operators of some shape. So pi n is this uh, quadratic combination of quark fields, square root is a quartic, and sigma is this. So this is, uh, this is point-like interaction between fermions. And the main idea was that uh, following the uh, theory of superconductivity, you can introduce it and then uh, write a so-called gap equation and see if uh, such interaction can produce a gap. A gap is the same thing as the mass, effective mass of uh, initially massless fermions. So unlike uh, superconductors, where this happens at arbitrary small g on the surface of Fermi sphere, here on the surface of Dirac C, it only happens if g is finite. And also this interaction needs some cutoff. So that was uh, the paper. Uh, they discovered that if you make a new vacuum with massive quarks, uh, you also have this quark condensate. 
and ions become Goldstone, number Goldstone modes, as, as they are called. Now, jumping 10 years uh, to mid 70s, there is discovery of instantons uh, by Belavin, Polyakov, Schwartz, Tupkin, and then Toft uh, quickly figure out that instantons have fermion zero modes, and these fermion zero modes in the determinant uh, actually make instanton into uh, 2NF operator. So if you have three light quarks and we have in real world, uh, this is six fermion operator like this. And uh, what is important is that uh, it, it can be written in this form where the first half is the same as Nambugu-Yonavazinia. It's a square of this plus square of that. But then there are two more squares of uh, this, uh, two more combinations. And uh, chiral symmetry exists in two parts. There is uh, SUNF chiral symmetry, which rotates three pines and sigma among themselves, as they should demonstrate it. They also do the same for these four fields. So this symmetry is not broken. And then there is U1 uh, chiral symmetry. And that's a symmetry between, for example, which rotates, for example, sigma into eta prime. This is badly broken. Here is plus, here is minus. So what it means is that in this channel, eta prime, it is a repulsion. And in this channel, it is attraction. So the fact that instantons solve UA1 problem uh, is very well known. Raju just mentioned it at the end of his talk and uh, Toft was working on it, uh, that repulsion makes it a prime, uh, heavy. But uh, it is also even more important that there is attraction in this channel. And according to uh, the same way as Nambuli and Lazinia, it creates break, spontaneous breaking of chiral symmetry. More details about breaking of chiral symmetry, I think uh, would be explained by Ismail. Now, in early 80s, uh, I came up with this instant liquid model, which uh, basically postulated these two parameters, the density of instantons and the size of them. These two parameters more or less substituted two parameters of uh, Nambuyo Nolazinia. The density is uh, defining the coupling and the size defining uh, the cut of lambda. And uh, now uh, with uh, this effective uh, a description you can either follow Nambu way or you can do numerical simulations, which we did later, and that is this instant liquid model. And I will uh, tell you a little bit about it. Now I'm stuck for some reason. I don't understand this. <laughs> ah, that's why. Okay. So let me explain some elementary things to the first order in Toft interaction, what should happen. Now, suppose you study correlation function in vacuum of two currents, and these currents are vector currents. So vector currents are left-left plus right-right, which means if you put this black uh, dot to be vector current, this U and U bar should have the same correlative. That wouldn't match with a uh, Toft operator because in Toft operator, there should be of opposite correlative. Why there should be of opposite correlative? That comes from property of zero mode. Uh, the equation for zero mode for quark and anti-quark should be the same. The anti-quark has opposite charge. So in order to have the same magnetic moment, you should flip the correlative. And uh, therefore, uh, there is no diagram like that for the vector. However, if you go to pseudoscalars, they are left, right, and right, left. So if there's black dots are pseudoscalar operators, then there is such diagram. Furthermore, if you uh, write uh, it operator which produced by zero, that would be this one, or eta prime or eta for two flavors, this is this one. And you multiply two of them, two black dots, you see that there is a cross term which, which makes u bar u into d bar d. And this is how it's written here. And you see that when you have pi zero, you have one sign. And when you have eta, you have the other sign of that diagram. So the conclusion is that yes, to first order in top Lagrangian, you have these effects and they have opposite sign here. 
So I already told you that the particle interprime is heavier, but uh, we can study it in much more detail using Euclidean correlation functions. What are Euclidean correlation functions? Well, uh, uh, in uh, early 90s, I wrote this big article about correlation functions in the vacuum for all quantum numbers. I pick up from experimental data and other information how the correlation functions should behave. This is an example of input. This is E plus E minus into hadrons. And this is spectral density for vector card. Now, if you do set an integral of uh, that uh, function, which is experimentally measured, you get correlation function of vector current. Here I plot them divided by what is called massless quark loop, which is simply power of distance, six, six power of distance, just to show it better. So it turned out that uh, here they are, this is rho, omega, k star, and phi. This is just experimental uh, data. This is how the correlation function looked like in uh, Euclidean uh, world. So what you see here, remarkably, that uh, when you go from this uh, relatively small distance, like a quarter of Fermi, to this distance, like one and a half Fermi, uh, the correlation function itself changes by several orders of magnitude. Yet its ratio to this x to the six, or multiplying by x to the six, it's very close to one. So what it means is that there are very small corrections to free propagation of quarks. That is in agreement that in vector channel, there are very small corrections. If we go to pseudo-scalar channel, we have these curves. And now you see that if you go to say one Fermi, like shown by this blue arrow, note that this is like 20% change. Here you have logarithmic plot and the change is factor 20 instead of 20%. So, the prediction is, uh, no, sorry, the observation is that uh, there is a huge uh, splittings of correlation function with different quantum numbers in pseudo scalar and scalar channel, which is not shown. And the, I interpreted this direct evidence is that this diagram, which I showed in the previous transparency, must be there. When we go to uh, theory calculations, you can calculate this correlation function from instantons. This is, for example, pi correlation function on the lattice, and you see that they are very close. Uh, this uh, plot is from uh, John Nigeli group in mid 90s. So uh, one other thing which uh, this group demonstrated was that you can calculate this correlation function. This is a vector current with rock quantum numbers. You have this uh, measurement. Now you take a uh, lattice configuration and start so-called cooling, uh, reducing action, which eliminate uh, high momentum gluons and then all gluons and eventually all the instantons remains. Why instantons? Because they are minimal the action. If you reach this minimal local minima, they no longer change. So the total action of the lattice from here to here changes by a factor thousand. That means you remove 99.9% .9 of glue and you measure correlation function, it's the same. That have shown, uh, this is the same for a row function uh, with and without. So that have shown that really this uh, Euclidean correlation functions uh, have the systematic, etc., consistent with uh, big importance of instantons and uh, even dominance in that sense. Now, this is a good picture summarizing it, uh, which uh, was drawn by John Negele. So if you look at the pion, roughly speaking, the pion is a sequence of tunneling events. Each instanton is a tunneling event. And I was telling that this is a, not like a tile. Uh, T.D. Lee in some lecture said that this tunneling is like tunnels uh, into Manhattan. I'm saying, no, it is like tunneling from Britain to France because each left-handed guy become right-handed and vice versa. And this is what pion is. If you go to a nuclein, uh, there is a cousin of pion, which is UD diquarks, which is the same vertex from another side. It has somewhat smaller coupling than this one, but uh, this diquarks exist in the nuclein. 
well, the last uh, picture which I want to show, uh, this is a vector and axial correlation function, now calculated from experiment. Axial comes from decay of tau lepton. So what is experiment are these narrow lines, yes? The distance between two dashed lines is the error bar on that integral. So these lines are experiment, the dots are TA. So I start with V minus A, and V minus A, uh, gluonic and perturbative correction cancels out. And it would be zero if there would be no chiral symmetry breaking. So you see that our instant calculation, which are these black dots, follow it very accurately up to large distances. And this other empty uh, squares, or ROMs, show uh, operator product expansion formulas used by Schickman, Einstein, Zaharov for QCD sum rules. So I describe it here, but then it deviates. Now, if we go to V plus A, our squares are here. You see they are at some distance from the data, but there is a perturbative correction like this to this correlation function. And this is about 10% correction. So if you account for this 10%, you recover the data. Again, QCD sum rules show some interesting wiggle, which actually don't exist in the data. So it only works here. So I'm telling you that one uh, with these ensembles of instantons, you can calculate correlation functions, compare them directly to experiment, and you see good agreement. Uh, one more qualitative picture explaining how we uh, get chiral symmetry breaking. So if you have, uh, so I told you that this red and blue uh, dots circles are instantons and anti-instantons. And uh, they have zero modes, but uh, the zero modes are not orthogonal to each other if you have two objects. So there is uh, possible to jump from one to another. This black line is a, a non-diagonal matrix element or hopping amplitude. Now the fibronic determinant is a sum of all diagrams like this when each instant to emit something. The question is which type of loops dominate the determinant. Now, if the density of instantons is small, this type dominate. There are neutral molecules. The Dirac spectrum of eigenvalues look like this. They don't have small eigenvalues. However, if density is large, then long paths become possible. And if this path, paths become very long, you will start getting very small Dirac eigenvalues. So this is how it looks like in the measurement. There is this deep, which is finite size effect in the infinite volume limit. Uh, it goes like this. So uh, chirally broken uh, phase is when quarks allow to go very infinite distances, so to say. And uh, this is uh, what quark condensate is. It consists of this uh, states with very small lambda or paths with very large length. Okay, now two, two small comments. One comment is that uh, you may also view this as the each instant on as the atom, which has bound state, the zero mode. If you have many atoms, all these uh, bound state unite into a zone of states. And uh, there is some width of this zone, zero mode zone, which can be estimated, and it is surprisingly narrow. So there were lattice calculations uh, done in particular by uh, Leonid Grossman and his group. When they just take lattice calculation, get a correct uh, spectrum of all hadrons, and then they just remove all Dirac states in the small interval around zero, for example, with this width, and then measure again all the correlation function, all masses, all hadrons, et cetera. What they see is if after they do this, all traces of chiral symmetry breaking are erased, the point is disappearing, uh, rho and A1 become degenerate and many other uh, splittings are all gone. The other thing which uh, this observation of uh, narrow zero mode uh, zone tell us is it solved puzzle of nonlinear chiral extrapolation. Normally people think that quark masses are small parameters of light quarks, which is true. 
But the idea was that as soon as they are smaller than lambda QCD, you can have chiral perturbation theory and have normal formulas. However, let us study with different uh, Clark masses and uh, in the uh, all the days, uh, it was necessary to extrapolate from um, masses at which calculation was done to physical masses. They found that extrapolation is nonlinear. It is not described by simple linear formulas of current perturbation theory. And the reason is that you should compare this mass to this width, which is uh, of this magnitude. And so only when it is much smaller than that, then you have linear expression. The other comment is about uh, also uh, interaction between quarks induced by Toft. Uh, so I said that it starts with rather complicated but still uh, well-known uh, operator with uh, six uh, legs and you have up, down and strange with particular correlatives, etc, etc. Now, uh, of course, uh, in reality, we deal with a four Fermi interaction between two quarks. So you can uh, try to loop one of the lines, uh, but because, uh, for example, strange ones, but because one, uh, one line is left-handed and the other right-handed, you can only loop it with a mass insertion, which allows to change from left to right. So there is this diagram, which proportional to strange quark mass. There are, of course, similar diagrams with MU and MD, but they're negligible, so we ignore them. Or if you are in vacuum where chiral symmetry is broken, there is S bar X condensate, you can send these lines to condensate and also get a four Fermi plate. Now, the point is that if you're interested in interaction between up and down, you have this diagram B and diagram C. If you're interested in strange light uh, interaction, you only have this diagram D. So this diagram D and C are nearly the same, but because this one is comparable, what happens is that already on the level of quark interaction uh, between quarks, there is nearly 100% violation of SU3 symmetry, flavor symmetry. And that create many effects. And uh, I just want to say that. Now, uh, I switch to some other things about instantons which were clarified uh, not in 80s and 90s but in in the last decades one of them is uh, what uh, which i need to explain to you what happened with effective coupling effective kcd coupling so i can put a, a coupling in this form and uh, one loop beta function generate this asymptotic freedom result so A is some scale, momentum scale. So if A goes to become large, logarithm becomes large, coupling becomes small. That's a synthetic freedom. Now, this is contribution of instantons of scale from sizes from zero to one over A. On the next transparency, you will see this distribution of instanton sizes. They have a peak at particular size. So when we are below this size, there is nothing here. When we reach this size, uh, this integral become larger. And if these two different the, the two uh, terms may have zero in between, that means the coupling uh, would go to infinity. That doesn't happen in QCD, but in, it does happen in uh, supersymmetric theories, for example, in this n equal two. In uh, this zyberg witten theory or N equal to superring Mills, which is a theory like QCD, but it has different fermions and scalars. What happened is that uh, they have exact answer for coupling as a function of scale. And instead of this integral, they have explicit elliptic function, which elliptic curve, which can be expanded in powers of one over A. And the powers go like four times K. And k is the instanton order. So lambda over a to the four is one instanton correction, then two instant correction, et cetera. Eventually, all of these were calculated by Nikita Nikrasi. And uh, he explicitly calculated all the uh, coefficients to all orders in k. And together, they made the same elliptic function as I've written obtained. 
Now here we can show how coupling goes. So the coupling slowly goes logarithmically and then at that scale when the instantons become important, it jumped. And in several theories, they jump in the same way they plotted it. Now here is a distribution of instance sizes. So this is three colors and then four, five, six, seven. So what you see here is that instantons of small size are suppressed as n goes to increase. This is what Witten uh, pointed out that at large and C, this whole thing should disappear. However, if you have something which is not small to the infinite power, but one to the infinite power, it is still one. So what happened with uh, uh, instant size distribution uh, is that it become delta function at some particular scale. That's one thing, uh, this comes from this paper of Thomas Schaffer. Uh, the other thing which I want to say is that uh, Witten conjectured that topological susceptibility is not of the order n, but of the order of one, which makes eta prime light. Now we know that eta prime is heavy uh, made by the instance. So how it, make, how it will become light? Well, it also was clarified in, in this paper. So at large enough uh, number of colors, it becomes light. So Witten as usual was right, but uh, that happened when the number of colors is say of the order 10 or more. Now, uh, I want to tell you uh, from holography point of view, what are instantons. I start with n equal four super n mils. n equal four super n mils, I remind you what is it. It's a very nice theory. It have more complicated Lagrangian, you may think. Uh, it has, uh, of course, four supersymmetries, four gluinas and six scalars. However, if you calculate beta function to one loop, you get zero. If you get two loop, you again get zero. Then there was a uh, general Schiffman, Einstein, Zaharov, and Novik, uh, general beta function, which shows that for n equal four, beta function vanishes to all orders. So in this theory, it's conformal, action doesn't depend on size, etc. Charge doesn't run. And there is idea CFT correspondence. So if we have this theory on the four dimensional brain here, Euclidean or Minkowskian at this moment. And then there is uh, another coordinate, uh, another six coordinate, but uh, effectively we use only one, the radial co coordinate of this remaining space, which is called holographic uh, coordinate. So if you go away from this, we go toward infrared. That's a, the space is known, it is ADS5. It has very simple metric and properties. So if we have a point defect, like a little speck of dust here, its hologram is just given by a propagator of the scalar field of the theory, which are uh, dilatons and uh, axions. And uh, they generate some spherical symmetric, of course, distribution. And uh, by the rules of this holography, this is uh, operator G squared and operator G, G dual has this particular shape. X is a coordinate here, so it is spherically symmetric. This is four dimensional X squared. And here is Z. So if you compare it with the formulas from, uh, for instantons, Z is the size of the instanton. So now we understand that this uh, distance, the in fifth coordinate is the radius of the instant. Now the interaction between two instantons are also given by uh, power, some powers of uh, this combination, which was discovered by Jacques Verbachot, who didn't know about ADS5. So what is that combination? It's uh, the shortest distance along geodesics in this curve space. Uh, just very simple meaning. Uh, the point-like object cannot interact with GMU because it cannot have any indices. And indeed, uh, trace, uh, sorry, stress tensor of uh, quadratic in G, stress tensor is zero for the instant. That's because it does not interact with gravity. 
Okay, and finally, if you calculate volume element uh, for ADS hive metric, you get this simple answer. And that will be distribution of instantons in uh, this bulk. And what it means is that in this theory, uh, there is the whole uh, space is covered homogeneously with some density of this uh, point like dust. That's what it means. Now, when we get together uh, all this information, I told you uh, uh, here is a picture which I propose for this uh, QCD uh, holographic uh, dual. Now, here, this is z, z equals zero is the boundary. Here is uh, our gauge theory resigning. The other end is called infrared. Now, uh, in order this theory to be confining, you need to invent this so-called confining wall. It's either make uh, space disappear or uh, do other things, but the main thing is that the strings which exist in this bulk cannot propagate during this point. And so if you have two charges which are connected with a string, without this wall, they can propagate infinitely far and the interaction is Coulomb-like. However, if you make a wall, uh, they will stop at the wall and it would be interaction proportional to distance between them. That's very well known in the literature. And there is a so-called effective QCD done by many people, in particularly a group of Kiritsis, uh, uh, which describe hadronic masses, etc. Now I'm saying uh, there should be this uh, uh, instant on wall. The instant wall sits at some distance, which correspond to this uh, location of delta function at large. So all instantons should sit here, but it is not a brain. Brain is something homogeneous, which have mass. No, they will have uh, just uh, four dimensional uh, plane in which all instantons sit and they interact with each other or exchange of these fields, et cetera, et cetera. What happens is that uh, the coupling make a jump like in the plots I have shown above. So uh, before the scale, it is weak coupling and then it jumps to some strong coupling. So there are like uh, two domains, weak coupling and strong coupling. And then there is this confining wall, which kind of cut it off. That's uh, the proposed way of models. The current models have coupling, which is strong here and weak here, but they do it continuously. I'm saying it should be done like this. Okay, so here is uh, my um, uh, little stop to other uh, part, which is related to EAC physics. Magic. Yes, okay, yes. Uh, so you... Can you... A couple of minutes or... Yes, yeah, sure. Let's, 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 let's make... Uh, maybe there is a question at that point. Yes, maybe there are questions, yes, on this part. Like Rajo, I would say yeah, that yeah. speaking without hearing any uh, uh, back reaction, yeah, yeah Edward, like I you have, worry. I, I have a question, just just a naive one. So you I mean you mentioned this thing about eta eta prime being light, right, in the large NC yes. limit? But you see that from the witten veneziano formula, right? So yeah, but the witten veneziano formula is just imaginary formula. It doesn't. Uh, oh. It, it relates it to topological suitability. What is this right. topological suitability? So, 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 okay. So the statement is that it's a yang mills topological susceptibility, right? Yes. Not, the question is what it is and degree. how it scales. I right. try to find so, this. So this the one. assumption is that it's order one in NC. Yes. And right? that happened to be true at large NC. Right. But, but, the, but then there's, you know, F pi squared, which scales as in, in C, right, in the denominator. So when NC gets to be very large, then that, that goes to zero. The eta prime mass goes to zero. Right. So, yes. so okay. So, but, so, so how that happened? So uh, yeah. this is what worked out by Thomas. Uh, if you have, so, so how, uh, uh, what the problem was? This is a question mark, what's the problem? So let me explain the problem. If you start from this uh, very well-known formula, which is called, uh, uh, scale anomaly, anomaly. Yeah. 
you know that uh, energy of the vacuum, which is also called epsilon here, is scales as in C squared. Because we have, uh, you know, this, this is true. Now it, it is related to this B. B is a coefficient of beta function. It is of the order in C. So if this is NC squared, this is of the order in C, then density is of the order in C. And this is true. You can uh, calculate uh, the, in this uh, models the density, it is of the order in C. Now, if the gas of instanton is ideal gas, then topological susceptibility is easy to calculate. Distribution is Poisson. And just susceptibility is the density. So if the density is scaling like first power and C, that's a contradiction to Vita. Vita says it's a third of one, it's a third of C. So what is wrong? The wrong is the assumption that it's an ideal gas. At large and C, it becomes very dense uh, medium because density is proportional to NC. And the interaction is such that actually the fluctuation of a charge becomes smaller and they are of the other one. Yeah. So, so, but, but uh, Edward, I mean, so. So it's not that there are no yeah, instantons. Yeah. yeah, no. There so are many instantons. It's just fluctuations are suppressed. So, so there's a derivation by by Veneziano, right? I mean, his famous. What is derivation term. of the same formula? That no, no, that no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. prime mass equals susceptibility. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. answer what the susceptibility is. Exactly. Exactly. So, so that's the point, right? Yes. So the formula is very general. Formula the is uh, correct. Of, yes, of, the question is. The interpretation. The question, you need vacuum state. model to calculate anything. So yeah. this uh, interacting instant liquid actually answers, uh, and it was, this question was not very trivial. It was worked out by Thomas. And the answer is in agreement with vitamin and cell at legends. Okay. So he calculated okay. the mass of eta prime, and he found that it indeed, at three colors, it's very heavy. It's as heavy as a nucleon. But then it started dropping at uh, about uh, six colors. It was three times less already. What is interesting is that there is another thing, which is, uh, on the other hand, light, sigma. Sigma is fluctuation in number. Uh, and sigma, sigma meson, is light in QCD. It turns out that in this case, uh, it becomes heavier and heavier and heavier. So yeah, I, mean, I, I don't I don't want to take away from your talk, but I, I mean my understanding also is that there's a pure OZI kind of argument without necessarily introducing instantons why chi is is of order one as well. I mean it's not inconsistent with instantons, but there's a argument no. from OZI. But but we can yeah, discuss but, this. Uh, but Witten and Viniziano didn't come up with any particular model. Right. No, I agree. I agree. It's a formal relation, which is correct. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay. Up okay. to the questions of what exactly are units, that okay. was a relation derived in the large and C limit when you ignore all fermions. So you can ask how you define lambdas and things like this, but there's a technical. Okay. In okay. principle, it's a general relation, but general relation like, uh, like this uh, 825, yes, is also general relation, which must be correct. but. If you want to calculate something, you need a model. I'm saying this model survived. It calculated uh, everything and, and everything agreed. Yes. Good, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Witten in 1979 paper says that there would be a problem, yes, with instantons. And the paper by Veneziano even called without instantons that he derived the situation. Exactly, yeah. Uh, well, here he was not right. <laughs> we can do it with instantons and everything works. Just uh, it is not trivial to go to large and see and work it out. By the way, let me mention that uh, perturbation theory in the large and see, uh, Toft very famously have shown that there are only planar diagrams and people are working on planar diagram thinking that they will derive string theory tomorrow. But it never happened. So large and C of perturbation diagrams also never were, were never worked out, right? Because it, it didn't really create this fishnet was not really given string theory. So it's one thing to point out that there is interesting limit. It's another way to work it out. 
Okay. Okay, thank you. So, so maybe we can switch to the second part of your talk. Okay, thank you, Marcik. So why we why do we want this light front wave function? And I should have written also Hamiltonians. You know, in atomic physics, uh, we have a very simple Hamiltonian. We have Coulomb interaction between electron and nuclei, and that gives us atomic physics. In nuclear physics, we have more complicated interactions. But again, we start from Hamiltonian, then we find eigenstates. They are thematically orthogonal to each other. They give us uh, energies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And one would think that uh, we do the same for uh, quarks. Yes, in the rest frame, there are quark models which people use, and uh, there are spin forces I will speak about and things like that. Uh, and uh, for example, for heavy quarks, it's a very good theory. It gives us uh, quite accurate uh, stuff. And uh, now this field blooming because we, they have discovered many uh, states with four and more quarks. The question is that, uh, however, if uh, to use this boosted to the light front is technically very challenging because what is potential in one frame can be particles in another frame. And uh, it would be nice to have Hamiltonian directly on light cone. And from that calculate wave functions, from them calculate all this matrix element, which we called PDFs and everything else. PDFs is not matrix element, it is density matrix traced. So uh, let me show one uh, particular problem which interests me, and uh, that is related to the, um, quark C in the nuclear. So people spoke about spin. Uh, every second uh, talk in this school mentioned it. Raj also mentioned it uh, just in the previous talk. So the question is that the spin uh, is somehow uh, Quark C is also polarized and it's polarized in the opposite way. But today I'm not ready to uh, speak about spin, so I speak about isospin. There is very big asymmetry of uh, isospin in the C. Naively, if you have this picture that you have a gluon creating Q bar Q pairs, you would say there is equal number of U bar U and D bar D. And here is the ratio, this is experiment, from here, from this paper on the wall, acceleration. So at x going to zero, where Raju want to operate at small x, it indeed goes to one. So we may say here, uh, gluon production of quark pairs is good. But in this intermediate one, it goes nearly to two. So what's happening here? You may think that there is some initial um, Way, way function features, which is not important at small x. So for this, I show a difference, d bar minus u bar. This is how it looks like. And it continue rising towards small x. So this difference is, is existing even at small x. It's just not that effective as uh, the gluon mechanism. So the ratio goes to one, but this go up and up and up. What is happening here? I'm saying that uh, the stopped operator will solve this issue. Now I need to explain uh, how this uh, wave function thing works. I start with very generic wave function, which was proposed by Gia and Veri uh, a couple of years ago. So what does it have? It has initial Hamiltonian, which contain transverse momentum squared plus m squared divided by x. M would be some constituent quark mass. For reference, they just take 350 MeV here. And then there is second, ter, second parameter kappa, which uh, is related to transverse confinement. For some reason, they wanted confinement to be quadratic in coordinate, not linear, but that's just for technical reason. You can work with linear too. And then there is a residual interaction. So uh, I take as a residual this four quark toft operator with some coupling. As a, so if instantons are small enough, which are smaller than most of hadrons, uh, I put it to zero and so it's a local operator. That's the simple model and it can be solved. 
Now, this technical detail uh, is that if you have, for example, a meson, you have x1 and x2, uh, but some of them should be one. So it is convenient to work with these variables, which is called s, which is x1 minus x2. So you can write x1 is a half plus one plus s over two and one minus s over two. So that automatically the sum is one and you have one variable s a symmetry and you have functions symmetric in s to minus s. So it would be function of s squared. Now you can uh, uh, calculate a typical measure which you have with these wave functions and it looks like this. So uh, this measure uh, exists for polynomials of some kind. This is Jacobi polynomial of particular form, which are automatically orthogonal with this weight and this and this. This is known, this is what uh, is done. Uh, so I generalized it to three, four, five, etc. any number of uh, things. So look at this, for example, I have five quarks, three quarks and uh, quark and quark pair. So I have four variables, S, T, U, W, this is x1, this is x2, this is x3, this is x4. If you add them together, you get one automatically. If you take uh, the, uh, the measure over x, which typically appears, you find this. So there is ds, dt, du, dw, and then there comes some powers of separate terms for separate of them. So the measure is factorizable but it is different for different variables. So the basic functions which, you, which one need uh, to use are product of polynomials of each variable separately. But those polynomials are different Jacobi polynomials. That's because the measure is different for different variables. Nevertheless, one can write in this uh, type of functions uh, uh, matrices and your Hamiltonian becomes some uh, matrix, you diagonalize it by Mathematica, and it gives you masses and wave functions. So uh, let me skip this. The first uh, is to do pi and, and rho. Rho has only confinement and chiral symmetry breaking. It's a very nice. Uh, so the parameters are such, already selected by these guys, they automatically give very good mass of rho. And this is a row wave function, which you get as a bonus. Now I added a Toft operator with some parameter G. I selected G such a way that pi is uh, near massless. And I get this function. Automatically, if I simply reverse the sign of, uh, of this Toft uh, term, which need to be for eta prime, this is eta prime, I get interesting wave function, which looks like this. Of course, we have experimental data for pi. For rho, we have indirect experimental data for existing. Anyway, it kind of worked. Now we go to, to baryons. The first baryon is delta. Delta plus is u, u, u. And you immediately realize that the Toft operator cannot operate because it is u bar u, d bar d. So it just this basic Hamiltonian again, all parameters are fixed. I uh, diagonalize it. it. You see some variables are downstairs, so it's uh, Hamiltonian is not simple, but in a given uh, set of functions, you can write all matrices, all, all matrix element of it, and then diagonalize it. Remarkably, the mass of delta was bang accurate, and even a couple of excited states of delta uh, of this Hamiltonian happened to be not bad. And it has some smooth uh, wave function which I wouldn't show here. Now, proton is a different story because in proton you have U and D and uh, there is this point-like interaction. So I also get the wave function and the wave function happened to be kind of complicated and it has many higher harmonics. The coefficient of higher harmonics uh, show some signature of what is called quantum chaos that they are kind of random looking positive and negative things with Gaussian distribution. So I conclude that the nucleon in some sense, at least in this model, uh, is like a billiard with three balls, which is already chaotic, which is kind of interesting. However, if you calculate now PDF, which means you trace two particles out of three and you have distribution of one of them, for example, T quarks. 
So you see from the nuclei, I get this distribution and there is some little oscillations which are signal of this complicated part of wave function. And the delta is moving like this. Now this is nucleon, of course, and this is D distribution. This is the other distribution, U. You see the peak is in the right place. Uh, the decrease to small x are different that because there are other sectors. So it kind of worked for the nucleon, but now I come to my main stuff. I, in the same Hamiltonian, calculate pentaquarks, five quark systems. Of course, I can uh, just uh, do basic Hamiltonian and the smallest mass which I get is this. This incidentally is significantly higher than the famous discovered and then undiscovered uh, pentaquark. And there are many studies on the lattice and also in our instant liquid model showing that uh, the reason why so light pentaquark cannot exist is that there are two diquarks which actually repel each other very strongly. And, uh, and this is uh, the distribution, uh, X distribution in pentaquarks. Finally, the next step. The next step is what uh, was the original suggestion of these two guys, Dorohov and Kochelev, two Russian guys some years ago. And they pointed out that if you have this toft operator and you start from D quark, you can only produce U bar U pair, not D bar D. And from U, you produce only D bar D. So in this model, you automatically predict that the C is asymmetric and there would be twice more D bar D than U bar U. And uh, there would be this big flavor asymmetry. So what I try to do, I try to make it uh, quantitative. As, as you see, I already showed you this experimental at some X, it is really approaching nearly two. So that goes in the direction they suggested. So here, what I done, I have a big bunch of pentaquarks and I know their masses. This is a formula of perturbation theory and I can calculate this matrix element between nucleon and the five quark, basically this diagram. And after I sum it, I get five quark tail of the nucleon in absolute normalization and shape. And this is how it look like. This is now distribution over you. So this is again PDF traced all of four quarks out of five, and it has this interesting shape. Now, this is the experimental uh, difference. It, you see it has very similar shape and it continue to rise. Here it is cut off, of course, because I stop on five, if I would continue doing it for higher quark number, it would continue going up. So I'm concluded that this uh, Kochelev mechanism, I should say, by the way, that Kochelev uh, was a young guy when he invented it uh, some time ago. And uh, like three or four years ago, he actually tragically died going to conference in China and uh, he had heart attack in the hotel and died. But the mechanism uh, suggested uh, seems to work and it really works kind of quantitatively in magnitude and in location in X. So that's one example of uh, using a wave function. In this calculation, it was very much simplified. What was ignored is transverse momentum distribution, which you can also do with some uh, functions, oscillator functions and uh, spin of course was ignored. So it only considered the basic spin uh, S wave uh, component. In principle, we should do this with a complete uh, set of variables and derive the, uh, the wave functions if we know the Hamiltonian. I, I repeat also the nice thing with, with this. So you get, uh, not if you have a matrix, it gives you some number of states. Uh, I work with like 20 by 20, so I get 20 states. A few of them really kind of match uh, excited uh, state. And uh, what is nice is that they're automatically orthogonal to each other. So there are complicated wave functions, but they're automatically orthogonal to each other and have zero in the right places, which of course, when you just look at PDFs, et cetera, you don't know a thing. 
Should I also mention uh, that uh, PDFs and TMDs and all these objects which uh, people discussed mostly in the school are density matrices. Density matrices are traced over something. And indeed, if you trace density matrix, you get entropy, uh, the entanglement entropy. You eliminate part of the system, which is pure system and have a wave function, but we may truncate it. Uh, so PDFs, et cetera, already containing entropy. And another observation which uh, belongs to Karzeyev and Levin was that the Glapp equation is a kinetic equation. It uh, tell you how uh, gluons are produced. And so any kinetic equation have not only entropy, but increase of entropy, the H theorem. So uh, all of it is correct, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not saying it's not correct, but I'm saying a nuclear after all, is a pure state and if we have a wave function it doesn't have any entropy yes. if we don't trace it with anything it's a pure state and that's that's why we try to do it now i switch to another paper this paper is uh, with uh, ismail about form factors so pedagogically i should start from these classic papers of these guys in 70s who said that at large Q squared, there would be this one gluon exchange. These are some wave function or distribution amplitudes as they are called from two pines, incoming pine and outgoing pine. And if you calculate, you get this result for the pine form factor. So if you take Q squared to the left, this is a constant. And this constant is just this integral of the wave function. This wave function is called axial wave function, which are generated by axial uh, operate a gamma nu gamma phi. Now it is believed that uh, asymptotically at large q squared, this function should go to asymptotic form, which is this red asymptotic form. I won't describe this evolution. This is very well known from seventies, and uh, and uh, if you calculate it, it uh, all nice, but it is about order of magnitude below the experiment. So one way out was suggested by Chernyak Krzmitsky, who said maybe wave function is like this blue line, and that increased this integral and uh, make it into agreement with experiment. But it was not supported by lettuce and uh, other theoretical developments, so we, it is not working. So our idea was that we simply add to the hard block, which is called hard block, an instant on and calculate contribution of the instant on to the hard block and see what happens. It is possible to calculate it as technical. So our paper is 50 pages and uh, there are many technical elements. The thing is that if you have massless fermion, it's uh, propagation in the field of the instant on is known analytically. Now, if a particle propagate in external field, of course, momentum is not conserved, so it can curve. The field of the instanton and the middle of instanton for a typical instanton is uh, about two, three GV squared. So it's not a small field. It can turn around. Uh, it's not possible to do it at infinite Q squared, but at some Q squared and not so large, uh, this field can do the job. So there are two diagrams. One diagram have this propagator, the red, uh, star is the hard object. It can be a photon, uh, Higgs, graviton, or dilaton. We did all four cases. And then there are these two propagators and another propagator. After you integrate over position of the instanton, you recover momentum conservation. So everything is fine. The other diagram contains this uh, zero mode. So zero mode means that you involve anomaly and the quark actually disappear into the Roxy and another quark take it place with the opposite correlative. So again, it is well known formulas. We can use them and get the results. Now here is uh, our results. So I said we have several mesons and uh, several probes because it's very similar calculation. So I show only one. This is a pion and vector current. So you see that uh, there is this um, 
formula, now you see there are this phi with P and T. Let me, this is next twist uh, wave functions, which uh, however have larger coupling constants. So they have this, uh, not only a phi squared as a previous one, but uh, another, another coefficient, which is large. And then there is another term, which is uh, called tensor, sigma mu nu. So that has gamma five, that has sigma mu nu. The original one was gamma mu gamma five. All this uh, distribution amplitudes uh, characterize pi. So this main thing is this uh, kappa, with, to which I come in a moment. There is a form factor and at large Q squared, it decays exponentially. This is the second diagram. The second diagram have even more interesting. It is a product of phi p times phi t. Only this combination contribute. It also have kind of exponential decay. Now, uh, we found out that this kappa is the luteness of the instanton system. And we found out that if we put a kappa equal one, we get this result. And then if we add one gluon exchange and instantons, we get this dotted line. And it's very nicely, so to say, I agree with experiment. So you see this curve go up, but then it will go down exponentially and at very large Q squared, it must go to this somehow. So these are the results and all other cases, there are uh, a dozen other plots like this in the paper. So, now I need to tell you about this dense instant liquid model. So the view on the instant liquid model changed. The original instant liquid model have rho one third of the Fermi and R, which is distance between them one Fermi. So that was one third to the four. This is coming from uh, angular integral in four dimensions. So this kappa for my original instant liquid model was this. And it was small. And if you take lattice result with what is called deep cooling, you see this, which is consistent with this diluteness and they are separate instantons. Now for chiral symmetry breaking, that was enough. Each of them have zero more than it was uh, explaining chiral symmetry breaking well. But now we don't need uh, Dirac zero modes. We need just field. And uh, what happened is that there are so-called molecular components. If there is instant or non-instant overlapping, partial overlapping, then the action is smaller than twice uh, action. And there are many of these in the vacuum. In principle, in the cooling process, they are also observed. If you cool long enough, they disappear. So uh, the question is, uh, do we, care about this component and how large is it? Now, this is the result of uh, one lattice work which uh, addressed specifically this issue. This is cooling time. Cooling is now done by gradient flow, which proposed by Lucia. This is some procedure which allows to uh, define RG and relate this time to RG flow, which is nice. Anyway, so if you cool long enough, you get these points and the instantons slowly increase in size. That's because they are all attracted to each other somewhat. But if you extrapolate this to zero time, you get this scale, the original one for the Fermi. The density, however, have this behavior. So it goes down. If you cool long enough, you get these points, which is approximately one. This is this. Uh, deep cooling, the picture I just showed you from different uh, group. However, at the beginning, the density was larger. So this decrease is annihilation of molecules. And if you uh, extrapolate it, you get something between these two arrows. So if we take uh, this number to be eight, and I return back, if we multiply it by eight, we get kappa equal one. And so, our interpretation is that we use this formula with kappa equal one and we include molecules and then we get correct magnitude. That was one lesson of this. Now is my final point. This is a paper which is ongoing about central and spin dependent forces in hadronic wave function. 
uh, first of all, introduction. Uh, already from very old time, it was clear that uh, in the same way that you have uh, gluon exchanges, you can calculate instant contribution to potential heavy quark potential. You only need to do Wilson lines. Now, instanton is a very special field. This A mu is proportional to Toft symbol times X mu. So uh, as also Raju was explaining, uh, the Wilson line is unitary operator, which basically is rotation of colors. It's a rotation in color spin. So when a uh, heavy quark goes for the field, uh, the field generate uh, rotation by color. And indeed we have cos and on one line and cos on the other line. These are rotation angles on, on these uh, lines. And then there is this integral. The integral is basically integral location of the instant. After you do this integral, you get the answer and uh, you can get central potential for heavy quark, static quarks. Now, if we take, uh, uh, I'm uh, cheating right away, I uh, show it for this dense ensemble, which is multiplied uh, the original instant liquid by factor seven. So this is the result, this is the potential. And we compare it, this potential with the canonical string tension, linear potential, this is this line. And uh, you see that in this interval of distances, they are the same. We can, this is seven, we can do seven and a half probably to make it completely the same. Uh, so uh, on this basis, we are saying, oh, uh, perhaps uh, instantons are responsible for this part of linear potential. Why this part? From a string point of view, uh, the linear potential is just classical. A string can vibrate and there is so-called Lusher term and then there is second Lusher term. And if you resum all Lusher terms, there is a formula which is called Arvis potential and uh, with a square root and it is plotted here. So basically the potential is string potential is linear starting from here, but not here. So our suggestion is that at these distances, this is GV minus one. So five is a Fermi. So this is like a quarter Fermi, third Fermi. In this region, uh, our uh, dense new model uh, produce uh, central potential. But why, why we want to substitute a string by instantons? For the following reason, we want to explain spin forces, for example, spin-spin forces. Spin-spin forces, as I will explain in a moment in the formula, are related to correlator of magnetic fields. Why magnetic field? Because uh, spin force is a magnetic moment times B and another magnetic moment times another B at another point. And we have a correlator of two Bs and two different points which generate spin forces. Now string is electric string. We don't understand where is magnetic field in the electric string. Instantons is a different story. Instantons, if this are done by instantons, then E equal B, they're self-dual. So the electric part and the magnetic part are the same. And there are simple relation between central potential and spin-spin uh, uh, potential. So our aim is to explain uh, spin forces. Yes, we are saying that in this interval, it's probably done by, um, uh, this dense instantons. So we calculate, we find these are perturbative spin-spin, uh, spin-orbit spin and tensor force. And these are uh, the ones coming from instantons. So this is, for example, spin-spin, how it looks like. The formulas uh, in principle uh, uh, defining five potentials in terms of some non-local correlators of gauge fields were worked out by Alten and Fabian very long ago. Now, if we use instantons, which are self-dual, this formula simplify very much and we get this result. 
And what we get is this. So what is uh, shown here is a spin-spin potential times R squared. Why R squared? Because you multiply it by wave function squared, integrate over volume, you get matrix element. Now here is a table of splitting between uh, spin splitting on the lower states. B quarks, charm quark, heavy light, heavy strange, uh, light strange, and light. So what you see from this plot is that the splitting changes monotonously from 60 to 600. In the matrix element, there is a potential which seems to be, which supposed to be universal. It's a correlator of ionic field independent on quarks divided by product of masses. If you look at these numbers, they're not like product of masses, but that is because averaging include uh, wave functions and you need to, so wave function for each family are different and you need to take into account. Now, what is plotted here is this black line, which are lattice result for this VSS. That's the only one which we think is a reliable calculation on the lattice. And it has this shape. It goes to zero because of this R squared. It actually go to a constant. But the data points are actually here on, on this side. So if wave function is approximately constant at these distances, and these distances are small, uh, usually smaller than radius of a particle except B, uh, then just the area on the plot give you magnitude of the contribution. So if you take this uh, lattice potential and for example, Charmonium, you see that this uh, lattice result give uh, this matrix element to be 108 MeV while the experiment is 116. So I'm saying this lattice result is actually good. It's pretty accurate. Now, if you calculate Coulomb part coming from Coulomb, uh, you get this about 60 and maybe and uh, this 30. So together is you get like 90, which is not bad. So the conclusion is that uh, you can see it from a plot that the area on the solid line is about twice or the sum of the areas of these two guys. However, there is a problem. So this area is correct, but uh, this uh, cause at larger distances than the lattice. So we understand uh, the actual instrument view should be uh, moved to the left somehow. somehow. Okay, so uh, now we say, but uh, they're not instantons, they're instant and instant molecules. And that made the problem very interesting. This is a, mo this is a molecule. And for example, the molecule is oriented in time direction like this. So the B fields of instant and an instant go to the same direction and electric field in instanton are the same and an instant or look in the opposite direction. And the same thing, uh, so it, the picture is T word for electric uh, quantities. It's also T word for A naught. So this angle, which is in the W, if we calculate uh, this contribution into uh, central potential is just correlator of Wilson line like this and Wilson line like this. So whatever is uh, a node here, there is this integral and then this other brother have opposite a node. So we conclude that this rotation angle is zero and this angle rotation is zero. So this particular vacuum configuration does not contribute to central potential. However, if we can uh, calculate spin potential, it does contribute because it correlates B field, which is correlated. And so this blue line uh, shows what kind of potential we get, VSS, from uh, this configuration. Now, if we put it in the other uh, orientation, we get this red curve. So if distance is large, like this dash with dash, it gets negative. If we add them together in correct averaging, we get this black line. So what do we see? We see that there is cancellation at these distances. So these molecules actually produce spin forces which are a little bit more concentrated than the instantons. And there is interesting 
a relation between uh, electric and magnetic fields. So I repeat that uh, here I show only VSS. There is uh, other functions, for example, spin orbit. Spin orbit is a correlator of D and E. So you see that there is this interesting game uh, of spin-spin uh, and spin orbit mm, and uh, tensor, of course, uh, forces. And there are contributions to it uh, by uh, these objects. And they give magnitude uh, more or less correct for quarconium. Now, if you calculate uh, it for lighter quarks, uh, there appeared also effect from uh, soft Lagrangian. And if you go to pion, that would become dominant. So Edward, we are running out. Of yes, this time. is my conclusion. Yes, okay, I'm, thank you. I'm exactly, exactly in it. So I told you at the beginning that there is many objects, vortices, monopoles, instantons, instanton ions. They are related to each other. And we have even this Poisson duality, which I didn't have time to speak about, but it is very interesting. They tell you that uh, you can either do it in terms of monopoles or instant ions, and you get exactly the same answer at the end. But uh, the partition function look very different. If you sum everything, it is the same. Now, uh, so there are Dirac zero modes, Toft effective Lagrangian, each instant generate interaction between quarks. They explain they're strong enough to break chiral symmetry if density is large enough, which is true in the vacuum. At high temperature or high density, it is not. So QC quadrant plasma is not having broken chiral symmetry. The QCD correlation functions are calculated and uh, some of them are very accurate uh, in agreement with experimental data. I also spoke about latency, holography, etc. So at latency, instantons have very funny interpretation. It's just little point-like dust specks in the bulk. The images give accurate uh, distribution of fields and the interaction give accurate representation of interaction between instantons and anti-instantons. Uh, I again want to say that Jacques Werbach had calculated these interactions and the, he didn't know about ADS5 and uh, distance along geodesic in this space, but uh, nevertheless, he get the right answer. So this is general stuff about instantons. I should also mention that I did mention here spherons, which uh, Raju was speaking about. We are uh, suggesting that one, and he described his uh, classical lamp, which contains such nuts, several spherons, but it is inside this lamp and lamp is complicated. It will decay into many quarks and gluons. We suggested that one can do diffractive study in which you create only one lump and that lump would be as one spiral. Anyway, that would require a separate talk, so I stop here. Now I talk about uh, three papers, one of them not yet finished. So one of them was the first attempt to do, uh, the first my attempt, there are other people of course who do it. Uh, this light front wave function, including chiral symmetry breaking in a simple way of quark masses and confinement in some relatively simple form, and uh, Toft vertex as additional uh, term. And in principle, with this technique, you can have a big set of uh, orthogonal polynomials, and whatever is the Hamiltonian, you can calculate all matrix elements, get a matrix diagonalize and you automatically get not only masses of hadrons but also all the functions. I have shown one application when I go, go all the way to five. So I calculated five quark part of nucleon and, uh, uh, and that explains isospin asymmetry of the C. I'm sure it explains also spin asymmetry of the C. The C is polarized, we know it from experiment. I have not calculated it because I ignore spin variables, but in principle it can be done. 
Now, uh, the other thing is this form factor paper. From this form factor paper, we learned that, of course, you can calculate everything. Now, the question is, what are the numbers? And we found out that if you make, uh, if you increase density by this factor, which, for example, we take to be seven or eight, we get a very good agreement with uh, experiments on form factors. And there is a, a actual, uh, justification for this factor from lattice, which see more instantons, or more precisely instant and instant pairs. And the last thing was that it turned out, which I didn't knew, and it was not known in literature, that if you care about spin forces, spin spin, tensor, and spin orbit, about half of it of, of perturbative origin related to Coulomb, and another half are related to, we believe, instantons. Even for quarkonia, if you go to light mesons, then of course, uh, this instanton become much more important and for pi and they become dominant. So here I stop. Uh, this paper will appear soon. We have se a several, uh, second paper, which is also practically done in which we go on light cone do linear confinement and some other technical issues. No, not spin yet. And in principle, we'll go to variance on light front, again with three and five quarks, but now including transverse momentum and spins that will require a larger matrices, but it's doable. So I stop here, Achika. Uh, well, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Edward, for for this uh, very entertaining talk. Uh, we are a bit behind our our schedule. But I didn't get a single. I have one question from Raj. But, yeah, yes, but uh, so I think we should give you a chance to answer to a few questions. So maybe I will start because I don't see raised hands. Uh, I have raised my hand. Oh, you have. Okay, so I will give you. Uh, no, Michal answer. is organizer, so it's oh, uh, a priority. Okay. Uh, so yes, I'm a chairman. You are organizer, so please ask a question, Michal. Uh, no, it's it's a very simple question. If you go to this, can you show this slide when you have this potential spin potentials? Yes. Like, because I uh, like this. Yeah, one one more backwards i think uh, yes this yeah, th this one is, so how should i understand this you, you have to add them or somehow match them no no no, no. Uh, okay very good so these are potentials they are universal related to vacuum etc etc then uh, each of these potential multiply by something for example spin spin is multiplied by spin one times spin two then if i have for example quarkonia uh, like charmonium, I have J psi and eta c. The spin spin matrix element have two different matrix elements for yes. these two states. Yes, S times S one times S two. So J psi have total spin one, the other have total spin zero. So S by S is a very yeah, long. It gives you a splitting, but, but it gives me a splitting. Mm -hmm. Now we also studied P wave states. So each of this family have four states. These are for, for charmonium, they are called three chi's with total j, zero, one, and two, and also state called h. They're all p state, yes? Now, this three potential appear with three different coefficients. In particular, complicated is the tensor one. But these coefficients are known, there are some clips. So there are four states, there are three splittings and three potentials. So I can get matrix element of all three potentials from the splitting of these four observed states, yes? Yes. And, and of course, I can compare to matrix element. I have wave function of each meson from normal coronal potential, for example. And then I calculate matrix elements of these uh, uh, universal potentials and I get all the splittings for uh, these four states, for example. One piece state and so on. Yeah, this is, my, my, this my is question, standard like atomic physics. Yeah, I understand. But my, my, my question is comparing the left plot with the, with the right plot because, for example, the the, you should add them. Yes, you should add them. I should add them. Okay. Yes. That was, that was my question. Okay. Thank yes, you. Yes, you should add them. By the way, this uh, 
So if you take pure coulomb, not regulated and not running, uh, ordinary coulomb, one over R, the VSS is Laplacian of one over R. Laplacian one over R is delta function, so as known also in atomic and nuclear physics. Absolutely. So this black curve, the naive form of it is delta function, but with known coefficient. Yeah, I understand. Okay, this was my my. Yeah, my but mind. but yes, and we okay. found that with normal parameters which people use, uh, this give half of a contribution and give give another half of contribution for charmonium, for example, in, in order to explain the split. Okay, okay. I hope I answer. Okay, thank you, Michal. Thank you, Edward. Uh, I'm scanning for the raised hands and I I can see only mine. So uh, so let me ask my, my question. You know, many years ago, uh, together with Sergei Chernyshev and uh, Ismail, we yes. we looked at these hybrids when you have exactly. uh, you have heavy and light, uh, and yes. uh, again, instant, instanton is, is somehow mixing them. So in principle, it uh, this kind of analysis which you are showing is. Uh, uh, is opening the possibility of uh, studying heavy light objects, which are very fascinating because yes. there are plenty of them. Yeah. Right. So uh, look at this G. This is so. First of all, in our paper, of course, your your paper is uh, certainly mentioned because, uh, among other reasons, Ismail is also author, right? Uh, so this uh, instant on think contribute. The splitting is experimentally 147. Mm -hmm. The instant on contribution, which you calculated by this, you know, give you only about 50. Mm -hmm. So this is way not enough. But in your paper, you, what you calculated in your paper is additional contribution from Toft, uh, or yes. you, you, you may say from zero modes. Yes. So, so that's additional diagram to this. Yes. And when we add this with your contribution, you get the right answer. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, well, that's that's. So it's it's very nice. So so so, and in this, you see, in the, here we don't even write anything uh -huh. because they give way too little uh -huh. of them. But if you put toft, you get uh, uh, at least light pi. Yes. I see. I see. Uh -huh. Okay. So so, so it actually worked together. This old paper uh, was a part of it, mm -hmm. as we now uh, discover. Mm -hmm. it, it was like a first. So if you have this, this, and another like this, you get one for two seven. Okay, perfect. Thank you very yeah. much. So it turned out, yeah, thank you for the question. It turned out that it worked out. And it also worked out now for more, more or less all of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, raw and pi were some special cases. So, but at least in this part of the table, everything worked. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let me thank uh, and let us all thank uh, Edward again for 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 this great talk.